listening to a Brawl Network production. This is a podcast for the best fans in the NFL. Are you in the mafia? Am I in the what? It's time for a Bills Brawl podcast. <sighs> Yep, another edition of the Bills Brawl. I'm your host, Mike Lindsley. Make sure you follow us at Bills Brawl on Twitter. I'm at at Mike L Sports and at Network Brawl. Download, subscribe, leave feedback, and a five-star review for all of our podcasts, all a part of the Brawl Network. Let's talk some Buffalo Bills football with you, Bills Mafia. Super excited for the NFL Draft upcoming. A lot of different mocks changing here and there. And uh, let's chat uh, a, a little bit about that and a little bit about uh, the makeup of the team, the band back together, of course, getting a bunch of opinions from uh, Western New York media and the like. It's our good buddy, Greg Vorse. Greg Vorse TV covered the Bills for a, a long, long time. Go check him out on YouTube uh, as well. Greg, welcome aboard, man. How are you? No problem. Thanks for having me. So I want to just kind of quickly start. I mean, you're a guy who you know has covered the Bills for a long, long time. Um, obviously this new era of McBean, uh, you know, one game away from the Super Bowl, all the extra expectations going into 2021. What do you think Bill's fans would be happy with in 2021? If they got to the Super Bowl, is that enough? Do they have to win it now at this point from, from 2020? We know you have to hit the reset button every year in sports and winning is hard enough, but sustaining winning is, is even harder what do you think the fan base is thinking right now as far as what, what they think would be the satisfaction moment? I think you have to accept that you're probably still the second best team in the AFC right now. As long as that dude named Patrick Mahomes is still standing upright, and we saw that if you can get him not standing upright in the Super Bowl, you can beat that team. But as long as he is, is healthy under center for Kansas City, I think they're still the gold standard, maybe in the league, but definitely in the AFC. So if you're a Bills fan, you have to realistically think, let's get back to the Super Bowl and see what we can do. See if we can be the team that gets that pressure on Mahomes and can figure out that riddle that is Mahomes plus Reed plus Hill plus Kelsey and take that next step. But I would shoot for, can we get to the Super Bowl? Being one of the final four teams is awesome, but can Allen take another step? Can Diggs take another step? Can Dawson Knox, which has kind of been the missing piece, tight end on offense, can they figure that out? Does that mean drafting somebody at 30? I don't know, but can they take that next step and get to the Super Bowl would be my my dreams, but the expectations better be final four. Where do you see this team going in the draft uh, first round? Uh, what direction and and beyond? It seems as though you know we'll talk about them bringing the band back together and, and running it running it back here. Uh, but it seems like maybe now there there isn't quite an exact focus, despite the fact that they need to fill edge rusher and they need a corner probably opposite Trey White. But I, I think anything's probably on the board here for Brandon Bean at least in the first round, right? Well, what they did this offseason and what you alluded to a little bit was bringing the band back together. Is Bean has set himself up perfect for the draft and I'm a huge draft nerd have been I'm 37 I feel like I've been a draft nerd since I was seven <laughs> and Bean has done the best thing possible and that has set himself up for BPA best player available so whoever that guy is if it happens to be JC Horn Falls and you can get that CB2 opposite of white fantastic maybe Quiddy Pay from Michigan drops a little bit and you can get that edge rusher opposite of Jerry Hughes and the future of the edge rushing position fantastic but bean has set himself up where he can do almost whatever he wants you don't like anybody at 30 okay drop back maybe dallas wants to move up maybe the jaguars want to move up with some of their capital they have and you can stockpile some picks and have those cheaper contracts knowing you're going to have to pay josh allen here coming up or you know you really do like quitty pay and he happens to fall to 24 25 and you go you know what shoot let's go get our dude Let's take 30. Let's take our third rounder. Go get him. That's our boy. Done. They put themselves in such a great spot that, that they can do basically anything. And you're not going to question Dean because it's all worked pretty much so far. I've thrown around the joke of, of taking tight end Pat Fryermuth 
out of Penn State. He's he's kind of that dude. He's in that mold of Kelsey and Kittle and Gronk. Not quite Kyle Pitts from Florida because Pitts is a different beast, but he's that next tier where you're like, this guy could be another difference maker on offense and maybe finally fix that one little bit of a hole they've had, which is that playmaking tight end. We're talking some Buffalo Bills. I'm going to get into a little bit more NFL draft uh, with you as well. Some some non bill stuff uh, at the end uh, with Greg Vorce, of course, on on uh, Twitter at Greg Vorce, uh, the longtime TV man covering the Bills in Western New York, all over YouTube, social media. Make sure you follow all, all of his takes and um, pieces on on the Bills. Um, what one thing that the Bills in 2020? I thought. Um, really had happened in a couple of, of, of specific positions was they had their, you know, their own guys take a quantum leap forward. You know, a couple of guys, you know, what can we get here? And nobody did it more than Allen, of course. But I think in 2021, a lot of what has happened so far in the off season, Greg, and I would love to hear if, if you agree with this, Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott, they stick with their players. They are so confident in the people they have in that room. Taron Johnson hung with them, you know, gets a huge interception return. Um, you know, they hung with Zach Moss after they benched him at San Fran after the fumble. War teams down in the fourth quarter. There's a million different examples of sticking with players, and then they make a big play, and they're in the system. Do you think that Brandon Bean, part of the offseason strategy here, and, and plus the draft is, hey, we're going to draft the guys we like. Maybe BPA, like you said, best player available is, 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 is a thought. That's fine. But if we get Ed Oliver to take another jump, if we get Dawson Knox to take that jump, if we get a couple of those guys we've been waiting on for year three or four, like last year in 2020, that solves both the draft and free agency needs. Yeah, they definitely, well, they want the players to trust the process. They also bring in guys that are, process guys if that makes sense they know the kind of guys that they want and one of the biggest things that they've been able to do you you mentioned a a little bit ago running it back them and the Buccaneers somehow it's almost like the cap doesn't exist to those guys the way that they've they figured out to to bring these guys back and bring in their own and and get guys to take less money or I'm big into looking at spa tracks um market value and all of them, Milano, and then some of the ancillary pieces, the McKenzie's, the other guys, taking less than quote-unquote market value to stay with the Bills. You saw you know, Micah Hyde you know, saying on Twitter that he took less because he wants to win in Buffalo. And when he told his friends the last few years, you should sign here, and they were like, oh, it's the Bills. He's now looking at them going, oh, but we're winning. So that's a big selling point also is what they've done and how they've been able to do it. And again, you mentioned that keeping your own dudes in the fold, you don't have to coach those guys back up. They know what's expected of them. You know, a, a Feliciano was, you know, not thought of as, as that kind of a dude, maybe with the Raiders. And he comes here and he falls in line and he becomes one of those pieces that really is a focal point. And he also, a lot of these guys fit that can do more than one thing. Mitch Morris gets hurt. Feliciano plays center. Guys slide all around. They just signed Bobby Hart, a swing tackle. Twitter hated the signing. But if that's your fourth tackle, a swing tackle, you'll take it. So they're doing a lot of things to fill those little little spots and little pieces to take that next step. And then you just hopefully, you know, we know the quarterback position is the most important position in all of, all of sports, not even just all of football. But if Allen can take even another little step, then we're going back to your very first question and, and talking about maybe a, a trip to the Super Bowl. Where do you think Stefan Diggs makes the most impact in the offense? Confidence. It, it, it seems like such a cliche, cheap cop out answer, but confidence. Josh Allen believes in him so much. Allen, I think Allen would let it rip just about anywhere, no matter who's guarding him, if it's going to step on digs. And then to kind of use a, a baseball analogy, when your ace pitcher comes back, number two, your number one guy then gets bumped to two, two to three, three to four, and so on and so on. So when Diggs is now that one, okay, well then Beasley and John Brown or Emmanuel Sanders this year is no longer the one. They're two, and the other one is is three. And now we're not hoping Gabe Davis is two or three. Gabe Davis gets to stay at four. And now we're not hoping Isaiah Hodgins, a rookie from last year who didn't play, is 
making an impact, he continues to grow. And maybe you don't need to worry about tight end quite so much because you have Stephon Diggs. He just breathes confidence through everybody, mainly Josh Allen, which is the most important thing. He allows for Brian Gable to scheme up more things because you know where he's going to be. He's going to do it right. And again, it just makes everyone else a little bit further down the pecking order, which puts them more in a slot that they're comfortable with. So he's just such a big piece when you can get all of those out of one guy. When 2020 was going on, you know, the, the, the wild year that it was just from that standpoint, of course, we don't need to rehash that because we've been living it for so long now. It feels like, it feels like 10 years we've been in, in the corona world. Um, from a football standpoint, the Bills, when did you feel, Greg, that they were a legit team, a legit top three, top five championship game material? Can they make a Super Bowl run? When did you did you have a moment of I, I, I'm all in with this group? The way that they bounced back from that weird Tennessee, Kansas City stretch. That weird we're playing Kansas City this state, we're playing Tennessee this state, COVID's doing this, we don't know, we're preparing for both teams. The guys wouldn't say that it was hard on them. They wouldn't come on the Zooms. Micah Hyde said, you know, nope, we only prepared for one team. I don't want to call Micah a liar. He could beat the snot out of me if he wanted to, but I feel like he was lying. I feel like they all were kind of <laughs> kind of lying in those situations because that was not easy. But the way they came out of that stretch after getting their nose bloodied by Tennessee and everyone seeing the Josh Norman getting thrown by Derrick Henry stiff arm, the way that they came out of those two and bounced back and went on that run and, and again, the process. They all bought into each other. They, they got over that speed bump. And minus the Hale Murray, as it's been called, they just ripped off all those games in a row. That confidence, as I was talking about, was insane. It was peaking. There's a line between confidence and cockiness. And if you can ride it perfectly, you're like the 1998 Yankees and no one can touch you. And that's where they were there for a little bit. You know, other fans, other players might have thought that they were cocky the way they were dancing at practice or the way Allen and Diggs fold around in pregame. They were that loose and that confident that their real selves came out, and that's what you saw. And when you can do that, the sky's the limit, and that's what they were. And I think that happened after they got beat up a little bit and punched in the mouth. You know, as Mike Tyson said, everyone has a plan until you're punched in the face. Well, they got punched in the face. And then got right back on the horse and the plan kept working. The process kept working. So when they got through that that stretch and started to really string stuff together, I was like, oh boy, this, uh, this, this could be something here. And it was. The running back room, Zach Moss, before he went down, I, th- I thought he was really, really good. Uh, he wore down teams in the fourth quarter, those long, sustained drives. He was a big part of that. Singletary, you know, again, they both had their growing pains. They had some ups, they had some downs. Um... But I'm still confident in, in, in those two guys at least producing somewhat. But, you know, Matt Breida comes in, the former Dolphin, who's just got a, another level, another motor in that backfield. How do you feel about the running back power ranking right now? You know, kind of that chain of command uh, with, with those three guys. And obviously that Breida signing could also impact what they do in the draft at that position. Well, here's the coolest thing maybe about Dable's offense is it, it you don't need a power ranking, if you will. It's yeah. who does what in a certain play. True. You know, now now maybe you can run a jet sweep with Brita, and if you don't have to tip your hands by having McKenzie in there. Brita, everyone wants to talk about how fast Tyreek Hill is and how fast some of these other guys are. I tweeted this out a couple weeks ago right after Brita signing. The fastest run in 2018, according to Next Gen Stats, was Matt Brita. <laughs> the fastest run in 2019 According to Next Gen Stats, if you would like to take a guess, it was Matt Breida. So we're talking different speed. And I'm not talking these crazy 40 times that are coming out now where me, you, and my daughter are all apparently running four twos all of a sudden. Like, this is legit 22 mile an hour in pads, in a helmet, in cleats, with the ball speed. He's different. So you use him different. And I trust Abel to use him different. I don't know... Moss, Singletary, Brita, are they any of them that guy? No, they're not that guy. 
that's why guys go in the third round and not, you know, Christian McCaffrey or Zeke Elliott, top 10, top 15 picks. But all of them together with Dable, with McDermott, with, you know, maybe four wides and you're going a little crazy with your personnel. I, I like them creating some space for someone like Brita and, and still doing what they do with Moss and short yardage and, and you know, hopefully Motor has a bounce back here. Greg Vorse with us here on the uh, on the uh, Bills brawl, uh, talking some Bills uh, football. We'll get into some NFL draft here to close uh, in a moment. Greg, the longtime Western New York TV insider and reporter for the Bills, doing a great job, of course, at Greg Vorse on Twitter. Get him on YouTube uh, as well. Um, Josh Allen, can he can he sustain this? Is the simple question. I don't see why not because his work ethic is impeccable. That's the one thing when you go back to the draft, if you read the naysayers, the haters, whatever you want to call them, all the prognosticators, you know, at at the big networks, you can't measure someone's heart, their desire, their dedication. And I'm not sure if there's a player in the league that you can argue is guaranteed to do more than he does. He has been willing to say, I'm not good at X, Y, and Z. I'm going to go work with Jordan Palmer. I'm going to work with Ken Dorsey, the Bills QB coach. I'm going to work with Brian Dable and get better at X, Y, and Z. And he did. Everyone says you can't improve accuracy. He worked on it, and he got better. Everyone says you can't improve the deep ball. He changed the trajectory. He changed how hard he's throwing it, and he got better. All of a sudden, two of his weaknesses coming into the draft in his first two years are now strengths, and he's finishing second in the MVP balloting. So if he goes into this offseason and once again goes, okay, I'm not good at one, two, or three things, and really works on those and continues to fine-tune his accuracy, his deep ball, Bills give him another weapon, Brady becomes a weapon out of the backfield, I don't see why he doesn't just shatter his own records from this season and that's not to mention that we have a 17th game so he'll probably do that anyway <laughs> yeah yeah the numbers keep going up and up and up um star Latule sits out 2020 due to corona he's back how important do you think that is i have argued with so many people on twitter who just box score scouts and tell me star is terrible because he doesn't have the sacks or the tackles that's not what he is supposed to do. What Star Latule is supposed to do is eat up blocks, eat up double teams, and let Tremaine Edmonds eat behind him. Hmm. And look what happened to Tremaine Edmonds. Everyone thinks he had a terrible year. Well, what does that coincide with? It coincides with Star not being there. And someone like like uh, Oliver trying to be the one that does that. If you stand Ed Oliver and Star Latule together, they're not the same beast. Star Latule is like an icebox walking through your kitchen, getting stuck between the doors because he's so darn big and thick. And that's what he's supposed to do is eat up those blocks and let Tremaine, let Matt Milano, let those guys work behind them. And that was gone last year. And I think that really impacted Tremaine Edmonds. So if you follow it, don't look at the stats. Try not to follow the football, but watch a game or two and watch what Star does eating up the center and the guard or the guard and the tight end, just eating up blocks and letting Tremaine work behind him, letting Tremaine attack the gaps and make those tackles and once again be free to be the freak athlete he is. So in a long answer, I'm saying Star's important. Okay, are pro days more underrated or overrated? Oh my goodness, are they overrated? <laughs> I, think they're, you, I think they're ridiculous. If you are a NFL-level quarterback... And you can't look fantastic in 25 throws that are scripted, that are to your receivers, that are indoors so there's no elements, yeah. there's no defense. Yeah. High, high school kids should look good against air, scripted plays, two receivers they've worked with for four or five years, and for the last four or five weeks just on those plays. Go find me any video where a dude runs in a straight line without pads on in his underwear and tell me, you know, where, how, where that happens in the NFL. It, it doesn't. <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay, great. Benching. Now, there are some things that the, the cone drills can show can show your explosiveness, can show how quick maybe a running back or a tight end or a linebacker can, can get in on and make moves and make cuts. 
So there are some things that are that are important. You know, the the, the jump, the broad jump, can show a wide receiver's explosiveness, a tight end's explosiveness. But most of it is just, you know, I don't know who originally coined it this, but it is literally the underwear Olympics. And uh, besides having to talk about it, I, it doesn't really it doesn't really do much for me. I'd rather watch, you know, Trevor Lawrence carve up, you know, ACC defenses than I would watch Trevor Lawrence throw against the air and Urban Meyer drool over him. All right, final thing here. I'm just going to give you the stage just from an NFL draft perspective. Anything that you're looking for, trades still to come, the QB class, uh, uh, the talented uh, weapons on offense from Waddle and Smith to Kyle Pitts and others, uh, you know, the, the, the position that you think is the strongest in the draft. Just take it wherever you'd like to go in terms of setting up the stage here for uh, setting the stage for the draft here, Greg. I'll hit on all of those. I think this quarterback class has a chance to be fantastic. I don't understand the Mac Jones stuff necessarily because no matter what team he goes to, he's not going to be playing with 11 first-round picks like he has the last two years with Alabama. I think Kyle Pitts is honestly has a chance to be a better pro than Trevor Lawrence. I think he's my number one player in this draft. I've said this since August. You can fact-check me on Twitter. The dude is different. It's that simple. Unfortunately for the Bills, after the first cornerback or two, I don't really like this cornerback class, so I'm not sure their guy is sitting there for them at 30. And if there's a team I see moving, watch out for Bill Belichick. It looks like Robert Kraft has come out today and said he wants to do more in the draft and be better in the draft. So if Fields or Lance do fall a little bit, maybe that's a team that pounces and and moves from 15 to try and get their guy and and, uh, you know, unfortunately for Bills fans, maybe have their dude for the next decade. Well, this is this was a lot of fun. Greg Vorce, of course, uh, make sure you go follow him on Twitter and on YouTube. At Greg Vorce is the Twitter handle. Uh, longtime Western New York Buffalo Bills insider uh, and reporter uh, doing great work. And Unbeaten in Mario Kart is your profile unbeaten highlight? Mario Kart. That's and still? The, okay. the original Mario Kart was my jam. You couldn't, couldn't touch me. Gotcha. Okay. All right. I do love... Um, I do love the dog rescue stuff, so keep keep at it with that. That's terrific. He's at my feet right now. I love it, man. Well, look, Greg, thank you so much for talking some Bills football here on Bills Brawl. We'll stay in touch. Really appreciate it, man. Hey, thank you for having me. Folks, I have to tell you about our good, good friends over at Manscaped. This spring sports season, you got to take care of your hair and holes with the best tools for the job. We're talking about our sponsors at Manscaped, the global leaders in male grooming from head to toe. When the clock winds down in March, be clutch and avoid the upset with the Manscaped Performance Package to keep all your hair and holes tamed. Start taking care of your man parts today with 20% off and free shipping. Just go to manscaped.com and use code BRAWL for our exclusive offer. Again, that's manscaped.com, and use code BRAWL for our exclusive offer in taking care of your hair and holes with the best tools for the job at Manscaped this spring sports season. Also, a big tip of the cap, thank you to our friends at DraftKings. You know how it is. Thanks to our partnership with DraftKings, you can actually go open up an account, DraftKings.com, play against your friends, win money, Take chances on all the big games. Go over to DraftKings.com, DraftKings.com. Open up your account today, and you can see what other people are saying about DraftKings, and it's all really, really, really good. You can sign up, play with the leader in daily fantasy sports, get a deposit bonus up to 500 bucks at DraftKings, daily fantasy sports, DraftKings.com. Big time thanks to Greg Vorce talking some Buffalo Bills football. I'm Mike Lindsley. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter as well, at MikeLSports. And you can follow me on uh, on Instagram, MikeLSports1979. And uh, just really appreciate everybody listening in to the Bills Brawl here, all a part of the Brawl Network. And as I always tell you, enjoy the games. Enjoy the games.